What's up, everyone? This is El Destroyer 229, and welcome back to the Bird and the Beast. Now, last time, we joined the Armadillion faction as we entered Phase 6. In this update, we have reached Phase 7, and things... To be honest, things haven't really changed that much since the last update. Um, there hasn't really been anything too new. Uh, one thing that I did just notice on my own is that in the Adventures tab, on the special tab for Bird and the Beast, you can actually check like what boats and upgrades that each side has gotten. So... For, say, the voting, if it doesn't show up here, you can find out the results from the Bird and the Beast tab. Which, in the last voting, vote in progress, no, I, I think upgrades, do do do, improve building benefits. So, in the regular votes that you, you just accumulate all the votes from Renown and such, Armadil received greater benefits from having the buildings of a majority of sites, which makes sense because Armadillo usually has the things from the sites. For Bandos? For having the majority of sites? Okay, they passed the same thing. Strange. But that was the votes for just the regular voting. Not the lectern. Uh, vote on the, from the voting board. Now for this update, it's a micro-change vote in which two options this time. On the left, increased building resilience, which is a 15% increase in the initial resilience of buildings constructed by your faction. So I'm guessing that 15% increased resilience. I'm guessing that means that the general wear and tear is decreased by 15% and or the damage that other players do to buildings are decreased by 15%. Or the other vote, improve building effects. Buildings constructed by your faction will have a boost to their effects. Uh, isn't that what we voted on last time? Hmm, it doesn't really seem to be too important. Really, it doesn't really seem like it's a big change, really. But whatever. I won't really vote for any of those, I'll just wait and see. Well, actually, no, that would be the last voting, because then it's phase eight, but whatever. Next is the lectern. So the last phase's winning choice was to recruit from the far west near the elves, which was a focus on bodyguards and battle mages. Now for the army management this time, the weapon is almost charged. We need one final push. So, the options this time are hire everyone we can, which is hiring many troops at the cost of morale, focus on a last assault, which recruit many ambushers and a morale boost, ensure we have enough workers, which, which focus on battle mages as well as other troops and a small morale boost, and then there's fiercely protect what we have, which troops mainly consist of bodyguards. Hmm. We already have a crap ton of battle mages. Ambushers are pretty good. Really, it's bodyguards. So I guess fiercely protect what we have. Claim XP. Once again, going into divination. Yay! Now, like I said, there really hasn't been that much of a difference. I have noticed that the godless seem to be a lot more active than usual. And the godless will, from time to time, they will attack caravans, they will attack uh, buildings as well. And they're just regular NPCs. It really, either side can take care of them. I was attacking them initially, but I'm starting to leave them alone. Mostly because it doesn't feel right to me to attack members of the godless. Because, really, I'm one of them, to an extent. I may not agree with what 
exactly what they do. But then again, the godless don't really know what they're doing <laughs> at this point. So, in this update, it's going to be another one of those talking updates. But it, at least it makes a bit more sense since we don't really have that much. Now here on the second floor, we have the golem. Which, since we have a golem out, I doubt I'll be able to construct. Yep, I thought so. It's weird how people can, all, can still construct these, and yet... I can't. It makes no sense, but whatever. Let's go ahead and talk to the golem master and hear her story. One moment. Yes, I have talked to her before, and I knew that she was a woman. Ah, hello there. What can I do for you? Uh, who are you? I am Geeka, the armadillion in charge of getting this golem into a battle-ready state. I am from Takara's tribe, and endured the same struggles as the rest of the tribe, until we were happily reunited with our Lord Armadil. During my travels, I learned many things, including the knowledge of how to construct golems such as these. With what we faced, being able to create an army to fight for you was very useful indeed. With the sheer number of just... units that Bandos has, why is the... What? Okay, that didn't make any sense. The golem just suddenly spawned and was being attacked. But yeah, considering that Bandos has a huge emphasis on numbers, I can see how that could be really helpful. Uh, so, what is a golem, then, for you guys? Admittedly, I haven't talked to her on this option, so it's going- Golems go are some of my finest creations. Shame that a Bandosian thug stole the idea. There are a number of large creatures which have recently died. We take strong parts of these beasts and use them to create a skeleton. We then add machine parts to the skeleton, adding armor and weapons to the golem. Then, Armadil animates the golem so that it becomes a living fighting machine. The spell only lasts for a certain amount of time though. When it expires, my creation crumbles to the ground. Oh, that's a little sad. And a little morbid, too. The fact that they literally take parts of animals and creatures to create the skeleton with this. That's kind of creepy, though it is effective. Uh, that's all. It was good to see you. It was good to see you, too, Geeka. Okay, so that's really all the the important things that she had to talk to us about. Going up the stairs, though, we reach the top level. Now here, once again, we have Armadillo's head war mage, or head, well, general, his head diviner, and Armadil himself. Now, admittedly, I've not talked to the war mage or the head diviner, so I really don't know their stories. I have talked to Armadil though. So let's go ahead and talk to the war mage. Since I do have a rune token, I should be able to get all the conversations that these guys have. I don't think Armadillo is anything specific, but the diviner and the war mage definitely would. But having a rune token, I should be fine. Why, hello there, brave soldier of Armadillo. What can I do for you? Really should have done these earlier, so that way, like, it doesn't take forever to load the dialogue. But you seem rather cheery. I had some questions about you. What do you want to know? Who are you? I don't believe we've met. Call me Kami. I'm the head diviner of the Armadillians. I've been experimenting with divination since Wisp started popping up. Armadil noticed and asked me to help. Very convincing bird he is too. 
I construct items and weapons to assist in the battle against Vandos. I study it all the time, even in my free time, you know. I'm relied on, you see. It's important we achieve Armadil's vision of peace between mortals and gods. You seem really cheery. <laughs> Definitely a lot better personality than the Bandos's head diviner. So where are you from? I was born here. I mean, I was born in Varok. It was tough. We didn't have two slices of cheese to rub together, and we had to make do with our wits and empty tummies. It was hard, no doubt about that. It got harder when a gang murdered my parents. I survived on my own. Aubrey sneaked me the odd rune to practice with, hidden in loaves of bread. Almost choked the first time. I'd got a decent grasp on magic, but when divination energy started popping up, I was a natural. I met Takara, who introduced me to Armadil. They explained what they wanted to do with the world, and, well, you can't knock it, can you? Peace beats war every time. Yeah, especially with your backstory, I can imagine why you'd want a world of peace. I mean, just the turmoil in Varrock. That, I can see why you joined up with Armadale. Even so, why do you follow him? I've been a scrapper all my life. Staying alive by kicking people where it hurts and running away, you know? But Armadil showed me that living can't be about running away. He told me about when he ran away, hopping from world to world when he thought his Aviancy were dead. He came to realize that running was achieving nothing. If he wanted to mean anything, he had to stand. So he stands against warmongers, and I'm doing the same. He's come back as a phoenix, and I'm back as a phoenix too. At least if I can get some slightly redder feathers. This is why I follow Armadil. He's striving to end the constant wars between the gods, so that one day we can all live in peace. It's a lovely thought. I don't think you really need any sort of feathers. In on you. Seems like your hair covers most of your head, but whatever. Who am I to judge on fashion sense? After all, I'm a Pandosian war priest at this point. At least that's what my outfit is. Uh, you mind if I ask you something else? Um, what do you have to say about divination? What do you want to know? Okay. Uh, well, what is it? I know we've already gone through this with the Bandosians one, but I want to hear her take on it. Divination is, as far as I've got to grips with it, the process of gathering the life juice of Guthics and weaving it into divine energy. The energy is a kind of magic matter that can be made into various govins. You'll create things like portents, signs, and divine locations, Things that can help you with your day-to-day -day life. In our case, we're powering a building-sized ritual to stop Bandos, a war ender. We call it the Divine Focus. So why are you using it? I've always been a fan of learning new things. As a girl, I had to adapt to survive. So when I came across some wisps, I wondered how I could use them. Or make money from them, you know? But I'm an armadillion now. It's been great for creating items that have helped my new tribe, and beating Bandos, of course. With a little luck, everyone will live in peace and harmony once the battle is over. I'm afraid that stopping Bandos is only the first step to that end. I mean, you have so many different gods with so many different goals. I mean, I honestly, really, Armadil has a lot of competition because aside from Saren and maybe Zaros, none of the other gods, and also the godless, would, would agree with him. 
so he would pretty much have to put down all of those factions. And probably the toughest of all would be the godless, if I would have to take a guess, just because... I mean, once the gods die, I mean, eventually their followers will disperse. It will take generations, but they would eventually disperse. The godless are always going to be there, though. That's, a, that's something that's for sure. So, where did divination come from? I'm told that divination has only come about since the death of Guthix. So, some smart fellas are saying that it's Guthix's life force. Or, it could be the barrier that Guthix put up to stop the gods from returning. Or, it could be the energy from the world, and it's been leaking out since the Battle of Lombridge. Whatever it is, Diviners are putting the life force back into the world and hoping that nothing bad happens. Like I said, really, divination is a combination of all three of those things. I mean, you get uh, memories, which are actually Guthix's memories, and then the energy is basically a combination of Guthix's life force, the magical barrier, which was created by the Edicts, and the Anami Mundai, which is the life force of the world. So yeah, it's, once again, it's all three of those things. Uh, can I ask something else? Let's see. I have some questions about the Divine Focus. Note to self. For future world events, make sure I talk to everyone first after the first day. That way this doesn't happen. We need all this divine energy so that we can power the weapon we've created to stop Bandos. The tower we're standing in contains a beam of energy. We're making a gizmo spell thing that will redirect that energy. Then we'll point it at Bandos's tower and bring an end to the battle. It couldn't be closer. We need to gather all the divine energy we can. Let's get there before Bandos. <laughs> divine gizmo spell thingy. Really? Pretty sure you could use better words than that, but whatever. That's all I have to say. Get divining in the name of Armadil. All right. Well, she at least seems a lot more cheery than the Bandos' head diviner. Let's go ahead and talk to Armadil's wa head war mage. You have gained favor with Armadil. How can I help you? You're an owl. <laughs> so how's the battle going? We are holding back the forces of Bandos, but we are at a stalemate. We need to gather divine energy so our cause can prevail. By the way, at this point, Armadil's lead still continues to rise. I mean, the ratio still remains about constant, but, I mean, Armadil's lead continues to increase. As of this point, Bandos has 31,214,692 divine energy. Armadil has 50,910,000 48 divine energy, which means Armadil currently has the lead by 19,695,356. Keep in mind, we are halfway through phase 7 out of 8. I don't see Bandos turning this around. I honestly don't. The time for that, for even a hint of a comeback, has passed. Really, I mean, the hint of that was at the beginning of Phase 5, when people would have been starting to switch. But at this point, I mean, if you try switching, you're not gonna get all the rewards. So, I think the time for switching sides is past, and it doesn't look good for Bandos! But I have some questions about you. He just says, please ask. 
just wanted to keep on going. Uh, so who are you? I am Takara, High Mage of the many tribes that follow Armadil. I have led the tribes for ten years. For many of those, we assume that Armadil died during the God Wars. Regardless, we continue to follow Armadil's instructions. I live for the day that Armadil's plan comes to fruition. So where are you from? My tribe is from Abena. It's a particularly unwelcoming place. Floating islands collide with each other and the only water is found at the planet's core. We cherish and hate our home in equal measure. Interesting. The fact that it's incredibly difficult to find any sort of water, especially for a sky-flying people. Sky-flying. For a winged flying race. So why do you follow Armadil? Armadil represents a belief that all gods and mortals can live in peace. Our tribe has experienced the consequences of infighting, and we strive to bring peace to others. Hmm, well that's interesting. Um, this next one's rather interesting, since the reason why Armadil kind of vanished was because during the first God Wars, he believed that all of the Aviancy were killed. He believed that they all went extinct. Very good reason, because for the most part, the Aviancy did go extinct. In Gilinar, the only trace of the Aviancy were the remnants that were thawed out in the God Wars dungeon. So how is it that you survived the Aviancy's destruction? A god named Zamorak decided that the God Wars had gone on long enough. He used the Stone of Jass and leveled an entire continent, creating the wilderness. The vast majority of our tribe was wiped out in the explosion. Armadil assumed that no Aviancy remained. We assumed that our god had fallen. We were both wrong. It would be many years before Armadil returned to Abena to discover those who had escaped the explosion. Children of the deserters the sick, and the infirm. Sorry if it kind of seems like everything kind of shifted a little bit, or the text box beneath the text thing here. I got logged out for whatever reason. That's the first time that's actually happened on camera. Well, whatever. So, why do you... F Wait, have I asked this? Why do you follow Armadil? Armadil represents a belief that all gods and mortals can live in peace. Our tribe has experienced the consequences of infighting, and we strive to bring peace to others. I get the feeling I already asked you that. So, what happened after the God Wars? Okay, um, actually, it's very strange. He said that he'll only reveal those that he trusts completely, which is strange that I need a dragon armadillion token for that, but whatever. I guess I I was wrong in assuming that I needed I only needed rune for everything. Uh can you tell me about the gods? What can you tell me about Armadil? Armadil has proven time and time again that he is a great leader who can achieve peace and freedom as long as we have faith in him. You might ask why a peaceful god is at battle. This is not something Armadil wants. Bandos is war personified, so he cannot be allowed to live. Our tribes have followed Armadil for as long as I can recall. We kept our faith in him, even when we thought he had died. Finally, our loyalty has been rewarded. By following Armadil, we hope to bring peace to the gods. That, in turn, 
will allow peace and prosperity for Gillenor. Well, like I said, that sort of peace is not something to that will come easily, even after defeating Bandos. I mean, uh, I think it was the Bandosian head engineer that mentioned that. I mean, what a ridiculous notion it would be for Saradom and, and or or Zamorak to just sit down and have peace, to actually s settle down and have harmony between the gods and the mortals. And that is a ridiculous notion for those gods. And like I said, Saren would probably be behind Armadil. Maybe Zaros. Zaros we don't really know his plan. But for every other faction, every other god, and the godless, and Selyske, because Selyske you have absolutely no idea what the hell he's doing, Armadil would need to put down every single one of them in order to attain the true peace he wants to create. So, how he plans to do that, I'm not sure. What can you tell me about Bandos? Bandos seeks ownership of the world at all costs, even at the expense of those who follow him. He does this with brute force, starting battle after battle. That's weird. That actually doesn't match up to what he says here. He says he doesn't do this by subtle means. He starts battle after battle. Eh, whatever. You can see that he lusts for combat. Even if he defeats all the gods, that lust will remain. This is why Armadil has come to stop him. We can halt the cycle of war and bring peace to all species. It's a step in the right direction, but it wouldn't solve the problem entirely. So what can you tell me about Guthics? Guthics did not favor war. I agree with that notion completely. But Guthics also neglected to deal with the gods' aggression. He chose to put up a barrier and ignore them. He hoped the problem would disappear. That approach was doomed to fail. Eventually, and tragically, it did. Well, I suppose that is a fault of Guthics. The fact that he had hoped that perhaps the gods would just leave Gilinor alone. That after millennia, that they would just grow bored, maybe. Or tired of just hammering at the barrier and that they would find some other world to to pester but unfortunately it would take a lot longer than a couple millennia to stop the, the gods and it only took about a little over two millennia about the fourth age only lasted about two thousand years and the fifth age only lasts about 169, so... Yeah. Apparently that wasn't enough time for... Guthix's plan to be realized. I have a question about my orders, though. You are doing well so far. Keep the energy coming in on our caravan so we can ensure victory. Armadil thanks you for your efforts. I have led the tribes for ten years. For many of those, we assume that Armadale died during the Gorgon. Okay, that is really weird. <laughs> it went it went to a different line of dialogue. It's like continue to assist the caravans, and yet he was repeating a line of like tell me about yourself. That was weird. <laughs> I have no more questions. May Armadale guide us to freedom. Okay, so it looks like we're going to be back to Takara very briefly when we reach Phase 8. But, that only leaves one personality left. 
Armadil. Now, thankfully, I've already talked to Armadil, so that this should be... The dialogue should come a lot smoother, which should help me during editing. Another follower who believes in a just and peaceful world. I thank you for your assistance and welcome you to the flock. What can I do for you? Who exactly are you? Have the Guardians of Armadil not mentioned me? My name is Armadil. I ascended to Godhood through the use of two artifacts. One of which became known as the Staff of Armadil. The other artifact, I do not willingly talk about. I do not share Bandos's belief that one god should rule over this world. We should act as guides rather than rulers. And we should all live in harmony. That is not necessarily a dream. It can be achieved through cooperation, mutual respect, and a strong sense of justice. If gods and mortals alike share these ideals, then the whole universe will benefit. Some gods would never take a path of harmony. In earlier ages, I'd be persistent in arguing with them. That armadil died during the god wars. Now I am reborn like the phoenix. And I will kill them, if I have to. So yeah, in the previous God Wars, Armadil was a bit more pacifistic, if that's a word. He didn't involve himself in combat that that much. I mean, obviously he involved himself in combat. There's the God Wars dungeon. There's the destruction of Forinthi, which later became known as the Wilderness. So obviously the Evianci and his followers were involved, but Armadil was a lot more negotiable. He preferred talking and trying to negotiate peace. Which obviously didn't work. So he's learned from his mistake and now he's taking on a bit more of an aggressive approach. By the way, you look a bit different than what's been described to me. You must have spoken to my guardians of Armadil. I thank you for returning the staff to them. That's interesting because the staff is no longer with the guard. Maybe he's talking about in the Temple of a Cove, which I have mentioned previously. Whatever. I have become the Phoenix. It represents my rebirth from a time of great sorrow. After Zamorak wiped out my Avianci, I was stricken with grief. I left this world and traveled the universe in mourning. As I moved from dead world to dead world, all became clear. I had trusted too much. I had fought battles that were not mine. Resolved, I returned to my home world. There I met with Takara and found that some of my people survived. My heart soared. This was a second chance. From then on, I have taken on the aspect of the Phoenix. To remind me never to neglect the fight for justice. By the way, if you do hear an echo, yes, that is in the game. Armadil does have his own echo. I don't know why, but he does. So tell me about your people. The Aviancy and I are from Abana. We were once disparate tribes, warring with each other. If I'm proud of one thing, it is that I have brought my people together. Abana is a world of floating islands. Like any race, we need water, and the only source is at the core of our world. But the path is fraught, and many have died for the simple survival of our race. We all migrated to Gilanor for an easier life, but Samarak destroyed my people with a single act. I believed all of my Aviancy wandered across the cosmos for many years, aimless and in mourning. Hope came back 
to me slowly, and I eventually returned to Abena. To my delight, I found surviving remnants of my people. Now I am as the Phoenix, reborn with new purpose. After this battle, I hope to find my people a home here, so that they can live in comfort. Well, there are plenty of floating islands in Gilinor, so I'm pretty sure the Aviancy will feel a bit at home. So why should I follow you? I envisage a world where gods and mortals can coexist in peace, where goodness is rewarded and justice prevails. War is distasteful, but there are those who would never accept a peaceful world. They must die. You say that so nonchalant. Join me if you value freedom and wish to put an end to this constant cycle of war. What's interesting with Armadil is, I mean, yeah, the fact that he and his followers are pretty much on are on the same page. Whereas Bandos is a little bit misleading. I mean, yeah, really, it's be the strongest and you will survive. If you're not the strongest, you die. It's a bit more straightforward, but not quite exactly fair with Bandos. Armadil truly seeks harmony between himself and the rest of the gods and mortals. And this is why I prefer Armadil above any of the factions thus far that have been in these battles. Because, personally, I believe Armadil is in the right sense of mind to try to find peace between the gods and mortals. There are some things that I disagree with, and just how he intends on getting that peace, and mostly whether, like, they will still worship him and the other gods as gods. Because that's the big thing that Guthix despised, was worship. He didn't want mortals to worship other gods. Well, just worship deities in general. He didn't, he didn't want to be worshipped. He didn't want mortals to worship gods. So, that's kind of the big thing with Guthix. With Armadil, I can see a bit of negotiation in trying to find some common ground. So even though I'm with the godless, and I believe that it is through Saren that the godless can achieve their ends, I think there's room for Armadil to be in that pact. It just depends on whether there can be cooperation between the three groups, which I would love to try to put together, if I can help it. So why are you fighting Bandos? God should not force their power on others. Bandos thinks otherwise. He cares nothing for the welfare of others, even his own people especially his own people. He lives for the glory of battle and would wreak havoc on this planet. I am loath to start a war, but I cannot stand by and let this destruction be unimpeded. As you saw at Sliske's ascension, Bandos has taken the bait. He only wants to kill a god so that he can claim the Stone of Jass. With it, the world is his. Bandos's defeat will be a signal to the other gods. Tyranny is a blight, and I will stop at nothing to achieve peace between gods and mortals. It is interesting just to see, just, like I said, how much he's changed. How he used to be this very negotiable being. And now Armadil has taken a bit more of a fiercer stance, which does seem a little bit counterproductive 
I mean, yeah, Bandos has mentioned how he's hypocritical. Karamir has hinted at that hypocrisy. But I mean, Armadil truly wants peace. But he sees now that peace can only be achieved by getting rid of the sources of war. Which unfortunately means he has to go to war to abolish it. So, it does go counter to what he believes. But it's something that Armadil finds necessary. That's everything. Keep our convoys collecting divine energy to put a quick end to this bloodshed. Well, I got a crap ton of editing to do because... I'm not letting you guys go through the pauses that I did, and yeah, I really need... What is that person doing? Oh, they're Aviancy guarding the tower. That's weird. Oh, maybe they're there to strike down... Like any sort of Bandosian fault. No, but that's sort of magic, so... Eh, I don't know. Maybe it's because they're resting or something, and it's their perch. Whatever. But that'll basically do it with this update. Like I said, nothing really big has changed. In fact, I don't think really anything has changed between phases 6 and 7. But that will conclude this phase. So, join me next time when we enter the final phase of the bird and the beast. See if there's anything big that happens during the end of it. And we'll also learn that little bit of information from Takara that we couldn't get this time. So until next time, everyone. Dang, that lag. Until next time, take care. <laughs>